Hello, you're tuned in to Municipal Focus. This is the uh, 2020 candidates version as because of COVID-19, this these series of interviews that you're gonna see from the candidates, I think they're gonna be vital because of the global, global pandemic that we are all enduring and being quarantined and doing this thing called social distancing. We're not allowed to, you know, a, a candidate is not allowed to attend functions or gatherings like normal to engage the voter. So this is going to be important for the viewer, as this might be one of the few times you get a chance to speak with uh, a candidate. Today we are speaking with Mr. Jim Hickey. He is a candidate for re-election, re the handsome board of selectmen, Mr. Hickey. Uh, welcome to the program. Hi, Kevin, and, and thank you for inviting me. I do appreciate this. You got it. Um, as you said, it's, it's been difficult um, with the pandemic and actually having face-to-face uh, -face conversations. This is about as close as we can get to each other. Um, I should say right off the bat, uh, for anyone that hasn't seen me, in a long time. Um, this is what happens when you go through a pandemic. Um, you grow a beard. Um, I've also got the headphones on only to make it easier um, for both of us to, to hear each other. Um, for those, Jim, for those who may be new to town government uh, or new to the electoral, uh, the, the electoral process, uh, tell a little bit about yourself. Well, I've been a selectman for the last three years. Um, I've decided to run again because uh, I don't think I finished the job that I wanted to start. Um, we moved to town, my wife and I, Michelle, um, with two of our children, Megan and Ryan. Um, since we moved to town, we had two more, Aaron and Brianne. Um, we raised all four of them here in town. Like I say, we've been here almost 30 years. All four of my children went through the Hanson school system and then went up to Whitman Hanson Regional High School. Um, just before we moved to town, um, the two towns combined to make the whole, um, the whole school system regional. Um, and they have actually gone on um, to successful careers. Um, my oldest, Megan, is in New Orleans. Uh, Ryan's in D.C. Uh, Aaron had just recently moved out within the last year and a half to Cambridge and Brianne is still with us at home. Um, as, as far as volunteering, Kevin, uh, I, I started out uh, coaching youth sports. Um, and uh, it seemed for me, my little niche, uh, when Brianne, my youngest, wanted to play softball, um, I took a I took that program over, <clears throat> excuse me, and um, kind of uh, uh, put us on the map. Um, but I, I didn't do it alone. And, you know, I, I, I'd be afraid to mention some of the names, um, but I didn't do it alone. There were uh, quite a few people that helped me along the way um, to actually put Hanson Girls softball on the map. Um, and we've had a very successful program. Um, and during that time I was at Camp Kiwani, uh, I did, uh, probably, uh, 13 or 14 plays down there, um, which was fantastic because it was another group of people that I got to meet, um, you know, with the, with the people in the youth sports, there was that group and then there was the theater group and down at Camp Kiwani. Mm -hmm. Uh, Megan and Brianne were both lifeguards at Cranberry Cove. Uh, somehow I eventually got on the Recreation Commission um, and did that uh, for almost three years and then became chairman. And, um, you know, I decided to run for selectman um, three years ago and, it, and it's, it's worked out. And that's why I'm running for re-election. Um, I'm not done yet. Okay. I, I'm, I'm, 
I'm surprised that you, you omitted a piece of information. Uh, did you not become uh, a grandparent recently? Oh my gosh, yes I have, thank you very much. Um, Megan um, and her husband, um, Drew, down in New Orleans, um, have a little baby girl. Um, her name is Isla Claire Schmidt, um, which is an awesome name. It's Scottish, of course I looked it up. And um, her middle name is after my mom and my sister who recently passed away. Uh, Excellent. Excellent. So yeah, we're definitely uh, proud grandparents. Um, and I don't want to get off subject, but um, uh, Car at our last selectman meeting, Karen, uh, who runs the library, has been, has been super. And I was able to go to the library today. Um, and their setup uh, is fantastic. Uh, where you just you put some books on hold, you call them, they call you back, and you set up a time to pick up the books. Uh, I was at the library for less than three minutes. Um, and I, I can't wait uh, to do a Zoom with my granddaughter um, reading her some crazy titled books. Um, can't wait. Well, definitely congratulations. Um, Thank you so much. <laughs> it's, it's notable to say, I, I could ask you what you feel that you have achieved uh, as a member of the Board of Selectmen, but knowing that you work collectively uh, would not be fair, knowing that you would have to do it in conjunction with the others. But what do you feel that as a member of the Board of Selectmen over the past couple of years, you've been able to achieve as a group, or maybe, or some initiatives that you've kind of helped lead um, and, and accomplish together? Well, I think um, probably the biggest thing for me is because I, I think we have a great, um, a great board of selectmen. Um, everyone has their strengths. And I, I believe when we work together, we can't be stopped. Um, I mean, when it and it depends on on really what you're looking for if if you wanted to see uh or if you ask the board of selectmen uh what is your greatest monetary uh value that you've achieved i, I would have to tell you uh it's the tax title properties um because over the last two and a half years um we've raised over four hundred thousand um, dollars just in tax title properties um, and, and that's the five of us, uh, working together with, with Gene and Lee and Todd, um, and of course, uh, Newtown administrator, John, um, uh, Stanbrook, who he came on after that money was already earned, but John and I have had some conversations and once this whole pandemic thing um, is over, uh, that is going to be one of the first things we concentrate on. Um, because as you know, uh, in fiscal 21, Hanson is going to need, uh, every dollar it, it can get. Um, but I, I, I think that's our greatest accomplishment. Although we've, we've done some amazing things with the cultivation of marijuana. Um, yet we don't have a single pot shop in town because that's what the people wanted. Um, we may disagree sometimes as a board, but the five of us together collectively, um, we all have a strong feeling on doing what's best, you know, for the citizens of Hanson. So I would ask you this, the town, because of COVID-19, things are, I've really thrown communities for a loop. And it's been tough to, dis, tough to work out a new fiscal year budget uh, for 2021. It's been especially difficult for the town of Hanson, knowing that there are some financial difficulties. There is going to be a Prop 2.5 override question and override to, for in the, uh, the area of $800,000 Give me your take on where the town is financially and your concerns as an elected official. 
Well, it's up to the people. So if uh, my opinion doesn't really matter, um, I don't, it's only one opinion, but um, I wanted to make sure it got on the ballot so that people could vote on it. So that's why I voted, you know, to put it on the ballot. My personal opinion, um, I can't tell you honestly when the last time we had an override is or was, and it is for the schools. Um, and I, I can remember Wes Bloss saying, I think it was two weeks ago um, at the meeting, um, that, you know, he, he taught in this town for 42 years, he's going to vote for the override. I am also going to vote for the override because we want to make sure that the students are getting the education that they deserve. But my, my, the question that I, I've kept asking and either haven't got an answer or haven't really, um, I know I don't like the answer that I've been given. Next year, it goes to full statutory. And it's at 1.6 million. Where do we get that 800,000? Um, I mean, the year after that, it's 2.2 million. Where do, where do we get that money? I mean, we can't keep asking the citizens of Hanson to, to do an override every year. Um, so as Kevin Sullivan said, and I'm not saying th anything out of school, it's a one-year fix which may give us time um, to come up with a, a, another plan because this one is not going to work for the citizens of Hanson. Yeah, you mentioned something in your, your explanation. You, you alluded to as far as the schools. Uh, you know, there's an annual assessment as part of a shared school district with Whitman. Um, and there's been a, the, the way the funding method is gone. It was more, it was more towards uh, per pupil. And, what community had you know, Whitman has a little, a little bit has more students that are populating the school district than Hanson. So that's why you kind of got a, you've, there's been a 60, 40 split all these, all these years. Now, as you've alluded mm -hmm. to the statutory me method is something that uh, is, has been popped its head up and or over the past year and a half. And there's a push to go towards that method. This is something that's supposedly a, uh, the Department of Education, secondary, uh, the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education has supposedly put forth. But, you know, again, this is something that's supposed to be voted on, I believe, by each member town. What is your thought? What is your understanding of, of the situation when it comes to the assessment and how it's going to be dealt every year or how it's going to be uh, expected to be paid each year. And well, you've answered that question. Um, how it's expected to be paid every year. I, I, I have no idea. I mean, uh, is, and I don't want to get into a, you know, like a, he said, she said type thing, but I don't know where Whitman expects us to come up with the money every year and the money is going higher and higher and higher every year. Um, what I could tell you that when we discussed it um, two weeks ago um, and we did not vote on it on the assessment at the time. And um, I believe Tuesday night uh, at our next selectmen's meeting, um, we're discussing it, but my personal opinion is they want to change. They want to change the agreement that we have now by putting it in an amendment. But nowhere does it say in the agreement that Hanson will get a fifth member of the school board. It's still a six-four split. Now, I know I'm going out in the limb here when I say, you know, the Boston Tea Party, <laughs> but isn't this taxation without representation? I, I mean, for me to say, I don't know. All I know is 
we only have four members of that school committee where they have six. I know that there have been whispers. Let's just say that I know the conversations have popped up <clears throat> in, on social media about the idea of possibly having ha, Hanson having its own school system instead of being part of a, a regional agreement. Would you ever consider or would you ever take a side if it ever came down to whether Hanson should split from Whitman and deregionalize? Um, I would, <laughs> I would like to say, um, that not only would I take a side, I would be more than happy to chair that committee. Um, yeah. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Or oh, maybe vice chair. Um, <laughs> sometimes I, I, I get long winded and may get off topic, obviously from showing you the library books at the beginning, but, um, I definitely think that we need to explore um, the possibility of deregionalization and find out what that cost is compared to what we know we're already going to be paying. Um, you know, over the next five years. Um, so I, I think it would be worth it. And this is not an original idea of mine. I also have heard the whispers. Uh, we have also um, talked about it at not one but two select meet meetings about the possibility of it. But we all agreed at the time it, it wasn't the right time. <laughs> well, now it's the right time. Um, and there should be a committee set up um, of people that um, are concerned and that care about, you know, the, the education of the kids in this town. Um, absolutely. Okay. Um, you know, we talk, we've talked about funding. So we've talked about the budget. We've talked about funding. We've talked, talked about prop two and a half overrides. Let's take a look at as far as businesses in town. Known that COVID-19 has come along, this pandemic came along at the wrong, wrong time. Mm -hmm. what, what do you feel can be done in the coming days, weeks, months, next few years to help stimulate business in town? What, what, can, what, what can the town, what can the elected officials do? Well, to be quite honest, uh, Hanson is such a small town. I'm not sure if we can do anything. Um, most of that, uh, you know, the situation with the small businesses is coming from the federal government and the state government. I'm not sure what local government can do, except um, that, you know, ask the citizens of Hanson to shop in Hanson. Um, I mean, I don't know if you know where I live, but I'm literally a, don't, a stone's throw away from Whitman. Um, I've stopped. Uh, I used to get my hair cut in Whitman. And as you can tell, I don't get my hair cut in Whitman anymore. Um, I don't buy my gas in Whitman. I don't buy my cigarettes in Whitman. I don't buy my alcohol in Whitman. Um, I'm trying to shop local. Um, you know, not that I want, you know, this Wyman's. Um, my wife, Michelle, was there um, Tuesday. Um, so, I, you know, we, we needed a rose bush. Um, in memory of my sister, we got a rose bush. Uh, but we chose Wyman's. Um, I mean, it's like the Hanson Public Library. I know it's not a business, but they're local. You can rent movies there uh, for free. Um, you know, with the other Dunkin' Donuts. Um, I buy my, my, my coffee at Dunkin' Donuts. Michelle shops at Shaw's. Um, we don't have a lot of business. Um, as a matter of fact, 
Michelle and Brianne are going to Mike's tonight to get our Friday night pizza. We always have pizza on Friday night, um, and it's usually from Mike's. Uh, not that I want to give them a plug either, but they make the best BLTs uh, ever. But it's you need to shop local all the time, not just, you know, especially now, not just that, um, you know, the, the holiday weekend uh, after Black Friday weekend. Um, and so, I've made that personal decision to do that. I was going to kind of throw it out there and, and, and say, so like, what, what, what would be a Friday night pizza? What would be is, do you, do you mix it up or is there? Uh, <laughs> well, I, I will either go with the BLT, uh, steak and cheese, um, Michelle and Brianne now, um, go with the calzone. Um, but, uh, this tradition started, um, well, I don't want to give Megan's age, but basically started when we moved into town and the four of them were together, we would rent a, a Disney movie and have pizza. Um, because, and I don't want to backtrack or get sidetracked, but I can tell you that, um, the medium income in Hanson is 125,000 compared to what Whitman's is. And I'm sure you know it because it's been in all the papers or whatever. It's 85,000. Um, and the average house in Hanson is 350,000. I'm not near either one of them. So I raised four kids on, on my salary. Um, Michelle would take Friday nights off. Michelle worked at night, Monday through Thursday. And the six of us would have pizza uh, and watch a movie. My children did not know any better. They thought this was great. Uh, and it was because back then, and even now, I'm not at the medium income as Hanson residents. And there are a lot of us. And this prop two and a half could hurt a lot of people. Um, I mean, as you know, Kevin, the, the population in Hanson, 60% uh, of the population is over 50 years old. A, a lot of those people are on fixed incomes. So I want to throw a couple of uh, a couple of interesting items that <clears throat> are long been conversations when 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 we ever have these political forums. Um, mm -hmm. County hospital property is usually a subject of conversation. Camp Kiwani, mm -hmm. as is, love it. As is starring Jim Hickey. <laughs> um, and then and then also there is the McQuant school there's the senior center yeah. in the library and and what do you do as far as to help expand the library or give more to your uh your your aging population of those items uh, which one of those do you feel are items that need to be taken care of or need to be discussed in the next couple of minutes here? I would go with McQuan. Um, we've been sitting on that property since the school closed. Um, and I know that they, there could be mixed feelings, but it was a school when the kids were in there, when the teachers were in there teaching the kids. It's not a school anymore. It's not ever going to be a school again. Um, you know, let, let's say um, that McQuan's property is worth a great deal of money. Um, and I'll just, I'll just throw a figure out of, you know, $5 million. Um, you know, if we, if we could sell it, and obviously going through the profit channels and all that, but we could expand the library to make the senior center bigger. Um, we could use some of that money um, to change or add programs at McQuan. Uh, we could use it in other areas of town. Um, obviously, you know, it would depend on uh, what would be built there. But that could be a great little neighborhood. It could be a 55 and older. Um, I mean, what's better than having a, a little neighborhood 
with the kids going across the street and playing at the playground hmm. or um, going to the library, just walking up your street and, there, and there's the library. Um, so, so for me, that would be the big one. And I, I guess it would be going back to um, I consider myself uh, the money guy, uh, you know, from the tax title properties and where the other town administrator was here, um, it would just be a phone call. Um, or I'd even, you know, say to Laura or, or Kenny, hey, you know, call him and ask him how it's going so I don't have to call him again. Uh, I'm aiming, and that's how we work. Um, so if, if we could do something with McQuan to give us a jump start, um, I, I think that's our biggest pressing uh, issue right now. Okay. We just got a couple of minutes left here. And sure. So this, this is my opportunity to, to ask you, um, if we were to have a political forum, um, I know that when there are candidates forums, people look forward to, to going into the arena and being able to answer the questions and do it under the, you know, the strain of having a live TV camera and having other people you know, that they're answering the same question. Something can kind of get lost when you're doing it remotely. But if we did do a remote political forum uh, with the candidates running, for, uh, your, running in your race, would you be interested in doing it? Oh, absolutely. Okay. Uh, would it be uh, a type of forum where people could hop on and ask questions? No, it would be, there would be a moderator. Okay. And then it would just be the three candidates. With, so who would ask the questions? Uh, me. Oh, you, just you? Okay. Could people I, mail it, email your question? I think I do a pretty good, well, I mean, I have my way of getting questions. Okay. Well, no, you do. You do a, a great job. Um, so, I mean, you know, you may have to edit um, this next little segment out um, because I just wanted to say I was dropping off signs. Obviously, I'm, I'm running and I put signs out on people's lawn with their permission. And I was amazed um, that the young people and the older people have the same concerns. Um, as a matter of fact, I did, uh, I think it was Wednesday, I did five signs and it took me three hours. Um, social distancing from people, um, you know, but we could hear each other speak and um, people want answers. And I wanna be able to provide them with the answers that Hanston as a whole needs okay. to get through this thing. Um, well, let me ask you this. Uh, we're wrapping up right now. Uh, okay. And the last two questions I'll ask you is, is there anything that we did not talk about during this segment, but you want to at least take 30 to 60 seconds to kind of just to, to, to mention and address? Um, I, I think I've actually uh, mentioned everything for me. Um, I would really like to, um, you know, look into that um, deregionalization. Um, but one thing we hadn't mentioned um, was the manufacturing of marijuana. Uh, we have cultivation um, that's already been approved by the town. Um, and it would be more money to the town. Uh, it would be in the same facility. It would be done by the same people that have already been approved by the state um, and by, by the Board of Selectmen. And I think it's another opportunity for Hanson to, uh, I guess, reap the benefits. Um, I mean, Kevin, let's face it. Uh, you know, it's been said that Hanson's growth is at 2.5% a year and this and that, I, I, I don't see it. I don't see the growth. But I do see a possible uh, revenue source through this. Um, I mean, I told you I'm a, <laughs> a, a, a stone's throw away from Whitman. I can see what they're doing. I can see the new construction. 
at the end of the other street on the opposite side of mine. Mm. I, I can see the four, uh, and I don't know what's going beyond because it's all fenced in, but there's a, 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 a condo going in uh, with four units. And so there's got to be more than that going in. I, you know, so I, I think manual, marijuana manufacturing um, could be a nice revenue source for the okay. town. If folks want to find out more about you or they want to reach out to you, um, how can they do that? Um, well, they can. They, I know we have a um, uh, an email address, um, you know, for Town Hall. Share it. I have no idea what it is. <laughs> nope, I've never used it. It's like your own phone number. Okay. If you don't use it, you forget it. But what I do have is a, a a house phone. Okay. And I've had this I've had the same phone number for 29 years since I moved in. And if anybody wants to call me or um you know set up a, a time for you know a 20 minute conversation or a half hour um conversation or, or whatever it takes, I'll be more than happy um to do that with them. I've done it before. Um you know, of course, my hours are a little crazy, but, you know, I call people back. Do you, do you want to share the phone number? Sure. It's 781-447-0132. It's actually a Whitman number. The 447 is Whitman. Yep. Jim, I want to thank you so much for joining us. And, uh, and, and to all you and all the candidates, whether it's this race, um, or other races in the other community of Whitman. We hope that we're doing our best to keep you informed on the candidates and why they're running, what they stand for, to better inform you when you go in to make your decision, or maybe you're gonna send in an absentee ballot, whatever it might be, we hope that we're helping you get a better idea as to where the candidates stand on a lot of the issues. My name is Kevin Tachi, and thank you for tuning into this episode of Municipal Focus.